Good happy Thursday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Thursday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday evening, so let's get started. First up, let's begin with your COVID-19 updates. Let's take a look at your COVID-19 numbers in New Hampshire. And here is a look at those COVID-19 numbers here in New Hampshire. And don't know. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. There are 75,990 number of people in New Hampshire tested positive for COVID-19. There are 1,175 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. There are 89 current number of hospitalizations for COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And that is a look at your COVID-19 numbers in New Hampshire. Three more Granite Staters die of COVID-19 as current cases continue to fall. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Homeowners, this incredible tip is just for you. If you owe less than $331,760 on your home and you haven't missed a single mortgage payment. Great. Good afternoon. So uh, two things, a quick numbers uh, update and then uh, just a, a couple brief remarks on the availability of the new Janssen vaccine. Uh, the numbers first, we are announcing uh, 231 new people diagnosed with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. Uh, in the last week, we have been averaging about 200 to 250 new infections per day that we've reported out. That's a decrease, uh, a, a slow decrease over um, past weeks. The number of people with active infection in the state is 2,191. Our test positivity rate is now below 4%. Um, that seven-day average is 3.8%. That's another number that continues to slowly uh, trend downwards. Uh, and then in terms of hospitalizations, uh, there are 92 people currently hospitalized statewide with COVID-19. Uh, unfortunately, three new individuals uh, have died from COVID-19 that we are reporting, bringing in the total to 1,178. Zero of these um, new individuals that have died are associated with long-term care facilities. Uh, and in the last week, there have been a total of 15 people that have died from COVID-19 uh, in New Hampshire. Um, so we now have, with the rollout of the Janssen vaccine, um, also called the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we now have three different COVID-19 vaccines that have been authorized for use by the FDA uh, and recommended by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and their advisory committee, uh, the ACIP. Uh, these include the Pfizer vaccine, uh, the Moderna vaccine, and now the new uh, Janssen or Johnson & Johnson vaccine. <clears throat> Excuse me. All three of these vaccines uh, are effective at preventing disease from the COVID-19 virus, and all three vaccines have uh, been shown to be highly effective uh, especially at preventing severe disease, hospitalizations, and deaths. Um, the CDC and their advisory committee, at ACIP, does not recommend one vaccine over the other. And so we are also recommending uh, that people be vaccinated as quickly as possible uh, and take advantage of the first available vaccine appointment offered to them, uh, regardless of the vaccine that's offered, uh, and advise against people waiting to be vaccinated uh, to search for a specific vaccine or formulation. Uh, the vaccines will become increasingly important, and as we get more and more people um, in our population vaccinated, we will be able to relax restrictions even further. Uh, but the focus right now is on rapid rollout of the vaccine and putting needles into arms, uh, and the, the new Janssen vaccine is critical for those efforts. And so we're very excited uh, with the fact that we now have three vaccines uh, as tools to use to increase the rate of vaccination within our state. 
with that, I will turn things over to Dr. Daly for a vaccine update. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a few quick updates on the progress of the vaccination. To date in New Hampshire, 340,000 doses of vaccine have been administered. This includes 235,000 first doses and 105 second doses. This means that in the last week, we administered more than 50,000 vaccine doses in our state between first and second doses. At this time, 17% of the New Hampshire population has received one dose of vaccine and 8% has been fully vaccinated. This week, we received 42,000 doses of vaccine, which includes uh, 11,600 doses of the new Janssen Biotech vaccine. And in addition to that state allocation, vaccines are coming into the state through the federal retail pharmacy program with Walgreens, which we continue to use to move people scheduled for vaccination forward to get vaccinated sooner. This program has now vaccinated more than 15,000 people in New Hampshire. Our equity allocation program continues to grow with an additional 17 events planned for this week. And that will mean 1,500 more individuals vaccinated through that program. The majority of these events have served low income senior housing, including homebound persons and organizations serving people experiencing homelessness. We continue to offer vaccination at our 20 fixed sites across the state. Through these sites, we have been able to vaccinate as many as 6,000 to 7,000 people per day. And then lastly, as a reminder, if you are a phase 1B person scheduled for vaccination and you indicated that you are bringing an individual to one of our fixed sites to get uh, as that second person to get vaccinated along with you, that person must also be eligible for the vaccine. Please do not bring someone who's not eligible because they will not be able to get vaccinated. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Chabonet. Good afternoon, just a couple of quick updates. For an outbreak update, we are announcing the closure of two outbreaks, St. Vincent Rehab and Nursing Center in Sullivan County Nursing Home. We have one new outbreak to announce, Hillsborough County Department of Corrections is now under an outbreak status again. Uh, they have 19 uh, residents and two staff cases. So that takes our outbreak list down to four long-term care facilities and two correctional facilities. So continuing to see that great progress in our outbreaks. Um, I just wanna give some details on our homebound vaccination efforts. Uh, beginning tomorrow, uh, we will have a 211 option for anybody that is homebound to follow prompts and get screened for a homebound vaccination. Um, what this means is that those that are not affiliated with a home care agency should be calling 211. So to be clear, if you receive your services, if you are homebound and you receive services from a VNA or a home care provider, you do not need to call anyone. You are on our list. Your home care agency has given us your information to set you up for a vaccination if you're choosing to get a, vaccina a vaccination. If you do not receive services from a homebound agency and you would like to self-select to receive a vaccination in your home, then you are to call 211 and follow the prompts so that you can be screened in. There are two different categories, either one that just one for groups of people that just need transportation and one for people that truly need the vaccination given in their home. So that begins tomorrow for those that do not have a home care agency providing services. I want to assure everybody, the home care, the homebound vaccination program is going to take longer than let's say the fixed site vaccination program. Um, it logistically going out and traveling to people's homes sometimes 30 and 40 minutes away is going to spread out the amount of time we need to vaccinate the number of people that are homebound. I want to assure everybody that we've allocated the vaccine for this population and we have enough vaccine to, to populate. So even though we may start opening up other phases or we may start vaccinating other people at the fixed site, we have allocated the vaccine to ensure that everybody that is homebound will have access to the, to the vaccine in the coming weeks. Thank you. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Vaccination for teachers, child care workers to begin as early as March 12th, Sununu says. 
those age 50 or higher eligible for vaccination before end of March. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR. Homeowners, this incredible tip is just for you. If you owe less than 331000 we're now at the point where everyone with an April appointment in Group 1B uh, has been contacted about moving their appointment up, and everyone who has an appointment in April at least has been given the option of moving up. Some folks have chosen not to take it, that's fine. Um, and there are still folks in April who haven't chosen, um, but we encourage anybody with an April appointment that wants to move up, again, just call 211. There's a lot of space available, so we just want to kind of re emphasize that time and time again. Everyone in phase 1B with an April appointment should call 211. Uh, there could be new, new openings across a variety of the different state sites. So we know that this has been very successful so far, so we are moving forward. We're way ahead of schedule. Uh, in fact, that we are on pace to move 2A well before March is over. Our original goal was to start 2A sometime in early April, um, and that's primarily child care providers, teachers, uh, administrators, and school staff. Um, we can definitely move them uh, to even be uh, well ahead of that original April time frame, uh, which means uh, vaccinating those individuals. Um, we're looking at, again, keeping a lot of options for those individuals to be vaccinated. So what you can see next to me is uh, some key dates that are coming up. Uh, we're kind of taking a two-pronged approach with the 2A population. That's the teachers and school administrators and child care workers. Uh, it will begin as early as next Friday, March 12th, as follows. So first, where possible, our regional public health networks will work in partnership with school officials to organize and schedule vaccination clinics for their populations to administer first doses in closed pods uh, as early uh, on and, and beginning on March 12th. So that's the regional pu public health networks working with the SAUs and the schools directly. Uh, for those who choose and, and can, can organize it, we can actually provide the vaccinations right there in a closed pod clinic atmosphere. Um, some folks across the state have already been working on these plans for months, and, and we definitely want to make the opportunity to honor those commitments. There are, however, areas of our state where some of the local clinics just aren't possible. And that's where we step in as the state and provide additional vaccination options for these communities. And so that brings us to the second prong of our plan, our state hosted vaccine sites. Starting on March 17th, we will open up registration for vaccine appointments through the new state run scheduling system, uh, which will be um, uh, unveiled kind of down the road a little bit. So. Um, March 17th, VMS opens to the K-12 to schools. So for the closed pods, they can start as early as March 12th because a lot of them have already been in process. On March 17th, uh, teachers can go on to our VMS uh, scheduling system. It's kind of a one-stop shop, very simple, very easy. Um, and we'll, we can start getting them. Uh, those, uh, back, those registration appointments start on the 17th with the actual vaccination starting on the 22nd. So that's why, that's why we do the graphics, right? Um, they can start registering on the 17th with, with the actual vaccinations on the 22nd. Uh, and of course, Walgreens is always going to be a part of this program as well. So they continue just to be an awesome partner with us, moving people up, um, allowing for more, more spaces. So as they get more vaccine uh, over the coming weeks, that'll allow even more spots, not just for groups and folks in 1B, but in, in 2A as well. And then furthermore, because we only have about 50,000 folks or so in group 2A, um, and between the closed pods, opening up for fixed sites and working with Walgreens, um, we're already ready to go into 2B, and so we're already uh, here to discuss that today. Um, and group uh, phase 2B includes individuals that are 50 years older and up, uh, and they can make appointments in our state-run system. That will be available to them on March 22nd with the first actual appointments and vaccinations to begin on March 25th. So. 2A is going to be right in the middle of March, and it kind of rolls in. It's not linear. It doesn't One doesn't close and one opens. They all kind of mesh into one another because we're simply going so fast, which is a, a really great opportunity. First uh, shots for Group 2B, that's 50 and up, will be beginning before the end of the month. That's on March 25th. So um, this is all great news. And again, if we get more and more vaccine, there's, there is still an opportunity for some of these dates to change, to even move up further. Um, but right now, we feel very confident that we can meet these dates, we can meet these goals. There's a lot of availability, and, and we just don't want to slow down. We want to make, keep making it available to folks. Um, and, and it's really a testament, to I think, to the team and, and how fast the process has moved. Um, 
Uh, oh, and la one last thing surrounding the vaccines, uh, and we'll, then we'll open it up to questions, is the dashboard. So uh, as we continue to make sure that we get doses uh, in the arms of Granite Staters as quickly as possible, for today we're also rolling out our new dashboard that highlights our vaccination efforts so people can uh, keep score at home, if you will, a little bit. Um, sometimes some of the national dashboard sites, they're off in terms of timing, and they don't always give the most accurate data. So we just have a more of a localized dashboard that will be a, a quite a bit more accurate. So you can view daily updates with the total number of doses administered, the number of great Granite Staters who are now fully vaccinated, um, and details on the progress that has been made uh, over the last seven days. Uh, right now, about 17% of Granite Staters have received their first shot, and about 8% uh, are fully vaccinated. Um, but again, as the number of vaccines increase um, almost every every week and every day now, um, those numbers will just keep increasing exponentially, which is a, a very, very positive thing. Um, uh, you can check out the dashboard at nh.gov backslash COVID, as you can see right there, nh.gov backslash COVID. So I apologize for, for there's a lot of dates we're throwing at folks. I know it's coming at uh, folks very, very quickly. Um, it's all just frankly because we're going so fast and uh, we don't, um, I know if we wait, if I wait another week uh, until next Thursday, um, we could miss opportunity and we just want to make sure that people have uh, an expectation um, of the timeline going forward. So could you guys go back to, the, to just some of those dates so just so they're, they're on the screen for folks? Uh, go back one more. That's to be. Yeah, this is, I think, the, the key one. This is the one really around the uh, K to 12 schools and, and child care staff. The 12th, 17th, and 22nd are, are kind of the next th three big dates uh, for those individuals with closed pods, being able to sign up, and um, the fixed sites actually beginning uh, the vaccinations as early as March 22nd. Uh, we can op open up for questions. I know that's kind of a, a lot to digest. Um. Okay, and there you go on that video. Multiple injuries reported after fire at Keen Apartment Building. Take a look at this photo here. At least three people were treated for injuries after a fire in an apartment building Thursday in Keene. The fire chief said there were reports that people were trapped in the building at 52 Malibu. Row Street. The fire was on the second floor and not all occupants were accounted for. The fire chief said firefighters searched the building while working to keep the fire from spreading to nearby apartment buildings. The fire chief said police reported that at least one person climbed out of the second floor window onto the back deck which was also on fire. The fire chief said firefighters and police officers worked together to get people to safety. The exact of the injuries was not known, and the fire chief said at least one person was sent to the hospital. No firefighters were injured. This is a breaking news story. It will be updated as more information comes into our newsroom. Catholic Charities Pathway Program Help Those Seeking Career in Nursing. Program will cover the cost of training and return of one-year commitment. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Homeowners, this incredible tip is just for you. If you owe less than $331,760 on your home, and you haven't missed a single mortgage payment in six months, you have to check out Congress's Mortgage Stimulus Program for the middle class. You will be blown away by what this program can save you. Tap my profile picture or the Learn More button to calculate your house payment and do it today. Roxanne Perry is currently the Assistant Director of Nursing at the Mount Carmel Rehabilitation and Nursing Center, something she says wouldn't have been possible without the Pathways program. My family was in a financial situation in which I couldn't go back to nursing school. I have three young ones. It just wasn't a possibility in order to provide for them. The program is available to any person working at one of the seven skilled nursing facilities run by Catholic Charities. In Perry's case, she was working as a licensed practical nurse. 
The program allowed her to take the next step, becoming a registered nurse. It just put my family in a position where I didn't think we'd be for the next 10, 15, 20 years. In all honesty, it's a life-changing opportunity for them. These are recent graduates in the licensed practical nursing program. Their education paid for by Pathways. With this program that we're working on now with the LPN program, we're paying 100% of the cost, including application fees and testing and, and books and uniforms, things like that. In return for the education, applicants agree to work for Catholic Charities for at least a year after they graduate. The charity is hoping this program will get people to consider them favorably and help mitigate the shortage of health care workers. It certainly was challenging at times, but like anything in life, it, things that are challenging end up truly being worth it in the end. Uh, there are also opportunities for entry-level positions as well. The charity says, depending upon the response they get, they may expand their program, allowing more people to enroll. Reporting live, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Sentencing imposed for woman convicted in Great Dane's abuse case. Woman convicted in 2018. Sentence has been stayed while she appealed to the state superior court. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR. Homeowners, this incredible tip is just for you. If you owe less than 331000 Okay, we're going to shift over to uh, the... Case versus Christina Fay. And um, there's a cell phone connection with a 203 number. Uh, Attorney Coles, is that Ms. Fay? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Your Honor. She just spoke up as well. Good morning. Um, I'd like you to, to connect in uh, where your video is activated. And so I don't know if you can change, a, 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 you know, a, enable video connection there on the phone um, or dial back into the WebEx connection on a computer uh, out. We need to we need to be able to have a video connection. I don't know if Miss Faye's able to do that. She has called in and she just spoke so she is present. I don't know if she has video access from where she is. And Your Honor, just to clarify because it may make some difference to you. Um, Attorney Coles and I have discussed what we think should happen at the hearing today, and I think it may be quite a bit less um, than maybe the... Okay, if you want to watch that full hearing video, you can just go to the Riley King Network Facebook page. We will share that link with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page right after this broadcast. A woman convicted of animal cruelty in 2018 was formally sentenced on Thursday morning. Christina Fay was convicted on 17 animal cruelty charges after she was accused in a 2017 of housing dozens of Great Danes in filthy conditions. A judge ruled she would serve no jail time, but she would be responsible for paying back more than one million for the care of the dogs by the New Hampshire Humane Society. Her sentence was stayed while she appeared, pleaded her case to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. In December, the court decided not to vacate the animal cruelty charges. Faye's attorney had argued her privacy was violated when an animal welfare group took photos and videos while the dogs were gathered from her Wolfboro mansion. The court ruled the state did not violate Faye's right and to be free from unreasonable searches and sieges. With her appeal rejected, her original sentence was imposed on Thursday. The Humane Society worked to visit agencies to find the dogs home. And there you go on that video and that report.
Gordon McDonald sworn in as New Hampshire Supreme Court Justice. McDonald served as a New Hampshire Attorney General for four years. Let's take a look at this video and watch some of it. Homeowners, this incredible tip is just for you. If you owe less than $331,760 on your home and you have... I'd introduce all the famous people in the room, but you're all famous. And welcome to those who are watching at home. Welcome back, Governor Sununu. It seems like just a few days ago you and I were doing one of these ceremonies. And a few days before that, we did your inauguration. Both were a lot of fun. I'm sure you agree. And this one's going to be no exception. It will be a lot of fun. There have been many great days in the history of this court. None greater than this one. This is a great day. Okay, if you want to watch that full video, just head over to the Riley King Network Facebook page after this broadcast. Former New Hampshire Attorney General Gordon McDonald was sworn in as Chief Justice of New Hampshire Supreme Court on Thursday. The New Hampshire Executive Council voted in January to confirm McDonald for the Chief Justice position. His first nomination to the State Supreme Court was rejected along party lines in 2019. McDonald served four years as the Attorney General for New Hampshire. Earlier this week, Governor Sununu nominated his legal counsel, John Formelia, for the Attorney General position. The counsel is expected to confirm Formelia's to the post. And there you go on that video and that report. White House warned states rushed to lift COVID-19 protocols. Let's take a listen to the video from Good Morning America. When school isn't a place you have to be, why not go to school where remote learning can be as remote as... ...coronavirus emergency. Nearly 53 million Americans have received at least one vaccine dose. That is about 21% of the U.S. adult population. The White House saying now is not the time to relax as some states ease restrictions. Whit Johnson has more from the vaccination center at Yankee Stadium. Good morning, Whit. Michael, good morning to you. Starting today, Yankee Stadium will now be one of the mass vaccination sites offering appointments 24 hours per day. And specifically overnight, it will be for the new single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The pace of the vaccine rollout is picking up steam, but public health officials are urging people and states to not let their guards down. This morning, President Biden calling out states like Texas and Mississippi for dropping mask mandates and lifting most restrictions. I think it's a big mistake. The last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. Dr. Anthony Fauci warning against claiming victory over the virus too soon. I don't know why they're doing it, but it certainly from a public health standpoint is ill-advised. The CDC saying the next few months are critical with the country on the cusp of a potential fourth wave driven by new variants. Since the peak in early January, hospitalizations have dropped by 65%, but the CDC pointing to a slight uptick. COVID cases increasing 3.5% within the last week, fatalities up more than 2%. Overnight, Mississippi's governor standing by his decision. We are just simply doing the things to give our people the power back to do what they think is best for themselves and their family. Texas opening businesses to full capacity and ending its mask mandate next week. Some applauding the move. I'm about done with masks. But the state has seen daily cases increase 75% over the last 10 days and ranks 48th in administering vaccines per capita. But as some states are moving towards reopening, many students still learning remotely. According to one analysis, just 45% of K-12 students in the U.S. are attending in-person school every day. President Biden hopes to get teachers vaccinated and back in the classroom. 
but our goal is to do everything we can to help every educator receive a shot this month, the month of March. And as part of that new push from President Biden, 9,000 pharmacies across the country will now be offering appointments to teachers and educators, even if they're not yet eligible in their own states. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that did it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching and have a great evening. See you back here later on this evening tomorrow for a newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye.